Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and today we're gonna to talk about an interesting way to reveal things. All right, this is just a quick tutorial about something I saw that was interesting while I was working on another project. The basic crux of this is that we have some masks on this thing, and we have some transform effects that are using those masks as compositing masks. So we go down here, you can see, I have a few of them added to each one of these. And these are all set to 50% opacity. If we open up our keys, you can see we also have an animator pushing our text over to make sure that it gets in these masks. And then we also have this one first coming in with the opacity on the text. Both of these transform effects push things over from the side, which gives you this kind of like multi overlaid version as they pass through the masks. So of course I went exploring with that and I made another version that's just the logo doing similar things, but just wanted to see how that would look with that. That was interesting, but I thought a different type of mask would look a little better. So I went into this crazy version I made here where I basically took one of our slit scan mats from before and then threw an image wipe on it using itself as a gradient to knock out some of this to transparent so that we can auto trace this using layer auto trace. I only set it for that one frame and it took quite a while. It gave me a ton of masks. A lot of them I've actually deleted out of here and I took those and I added them to this text layer. I squashed things in to where they would fit and I could have done more, but it was already starting to look kind of neat. So I left it alone. So while this is pretty cool, you can pretty much achieve the same thing with just a few masks. I started to experiment a couple here. On this one too, instead of using an extra transform, we actually have a mirror. So some of these things are flipped around. It's kind of hard to tell. There you go, there's an F that's backwards. So it looked kind of neat. And then I went a little crazier with it and added a bunch more masks. This is only 15, so it's not terrible. But the best part about this is that if we actually open up the effect, you don't have to actually go through and select a mask for every one of these things. You just set up your 15 masks and then you keep clicking this button and it'll automatically fill in with the next available mask, which is pretty awesome. The only problem is as you get to the bottom of the screen, this button's gonna move up. So you might need to use your tilde key to expand this out so you can keep clicking this button. If you click more than you have, you're gonna get none. So then you know you've gone too far. So this one ends up looking like that, which is pretty cool. And then I made this one, which uses a different transform. So this one still has a mirror that goes side to side, but the transform comes in from the top. So it kind of does this like stair steppy fill in thing, which is kind of neat. So with a simple text animator and just a couple of masks and a couple of keyframes and a couple of effects, you can build in something pretty complex and get different looks on kind of cool reveals without having to do much work. As a matter of fact, if we went through here, turn this off, grab this background image, zoomed out a little bit and close these up, grab our tool here, drag a bunch of different masks in. Clicky, clicky, clicky. Just draw a whole ton. Probably could do more than that or less, whatever. We have 17. Let's put an overall one just for good measure. And then we did the other one, I hit MM. All right, so then if we go here, click the layer name, and we type in opacity correctly. And you can hit tilde, just change these things all randomly. Yep, yep, yep. Even this last one can change because what we're going to do is overlay this image on top of itself, basically. So when everything is lined up, you'll still see it solid. All right, hit tilde again. I'm going to do a little transform effect. Let's set the position here. Hit U to open that up. Move that over a bunch. Move that position this way. Actually, you know what might be neater? Let's turn that off. Let's do offset. So we'll click this shift center right here and we're gonna hit U. shift that over like 20 frames. Why not bring this back over here a bunch and then hit E on this guy, pull up in this offset, click one here, tilt this back up and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, blah, 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 18. Close that up. See what we get. All right, let's take that last one off. That one's messing us up. Eh, it's still a little too many. Let's drop off a few more. Let's say down to 12. And let's bring some of these back in this way. Shrink that guy up. This one here. Let's try to make them overlap a little less. And bring that down. Actually, let's do this. Not that. Let's do this green one right here. This guy. All right, let's try that. 
There you go. It's kind of neat. And see when it rests, everything is back to normal. Because what we're doing is basically moving stuff that's transparent and then putting it back over top of the other stuff. So it just evens out again. Let's drop these all off. I bet if we did something a little bit more thin, a little cross pattern, bunch of them up in here. And I think one of the last things we should do is actually move the layer as well. Let's take this position, move it over here, Let's move it that way as well, just a little bit. Let's throw some of this on there as well as that. Let's go back to E here. Let's open this back up and yeah, everything cleared out. So let's just subtract all of those. Whoops. Go back to there because now our button moved. Subtract. Add them back in until we see that we have nothing left. Boom. For some reason you can't click all three of these with shift. Just so you know. Shift only selects one and then the other one. It doesn't select the whole line. I don't know why. But there you go. Actually, let's see. Instead of moving our position here, let's go back to 960. Let's just take another offset. Uh, let's not do it that way. Let's just type in a new one. Offset. Take that. Open this up. Let's move it right to there. Let's bring it this way. Ease those. We got like a window thing going on here, but you get the idea. So there's some interesting stuff you can do with this. If you combine it with like a pixel sorting or something like that, you can add complexity to it. You can get a lot of different interesting things by passing stuff through masks. And obviously this works with pretty much any effect, so you can try a bunch of different things with it. So have fun with that and make some new reveals. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I'm Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.